cheese? Chicken. You, want, you want cheese on your thing? Yeah, cheese. Whoa, that looks amazing. We got the same food, Mama. We do. Hmm? This is the best kidney you ever made. Some apple juice. Customers, like it makes you seem more believable because it's like, oh, anybody that talks negatively about themselves or like let their faults be known, they're more trustworthy. Yeah, I really like that because it made her seem like what she said that stuck out to me is she said, talk like you're talking to a girlfriend. That's okay. Yeah. Oh, I really love this car, but man, it loves this gas. Yeah. It's true. When you talk that way, it sounds like you're talking to a friend and they're more trustworthy because no friend is ever, that's close to you is ever gonna say it, make everything 100%. sound 100% good. Oh, well, actually, yeah. Same thing, like, I still recommended the, the place. I would still go back to the place. But at the same time, I'm sharing the, the complete experience. experience. Like, it's not 100%, like, 100% perfect. So it's like if you're keeping it real and you come across that way on social media, people trust you. So I really connected with me because I'm like, that's the approach I need to take. But like, I've already said I want my brand to be more girlfriend. I've said that a million times. Because I feel like that's what I am. I'm a girl's girl. I give girlfriend type energy. So I feel like in order for that to come across more, I need to be a lot more honest about like the complete experience when I'm talking to a certain people. I do have some energy Cut it out, bro. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> you are energy? Like, oh, what are you oh. talking about? You have so much energy. You just have energy for the things you want to do. No, I just have energy because I... Hey, everybody pull out. First Corinthians, Chuck, like he said, who in here, have, who knows what alimony is? But he creates this entire parable. Why? Because the goal is not just to tell the truth. The goal is to connect with the audience. And now, at this point, everyone's saying, amen, yes. And here's the master's trick. Here's the communicator's trick. But God can make the sea beneath your feet, the ground beneath your feet dry. But when you get out to that wilderness, he can't make your taste buds not desire the food you had in Egypt. Well. Ain't it crazy? And see, now we're gonna get amen. Ain't it crazy? So it's the end of the night. I'm about to go to bed. Please ignore this this whole situation. I just did this to get in the shower. I wanted to share something with you guys as we're about to head into 2024. It's December 30th, so literally in a couple days it'll be 2024. And Today, I was like making my goals. Like today was family day. Then when the kids went to bed, I ended up sitting down, praying, and then I ended up like writing out all my goals for 2024. God was impressing on me to not write out goals that I think I can achieve, but to write out goals that I think he can achieve. It was insane because the way that he had like brought that to me was he reminded me that when we bought the house in 2023 this year, we never thought that that was gonna be a 2023 goal. We actually thought that was gonna be a one to two year goal. Like, okay, in 2024 or 2025, we'll buy a home. But he reminded me as I was writing down my 2024 goals that, hey, you thought that you wouldn't be able to accomplish this until 2024, 2025, and I made it happen in 2023. So don't write goals based off what you think can happen. Write goals based off what I can do. And just now I was listening to a podcast as I was like taking a shower and stuff. And in the podcast, he said something that was so impactful for me. It was like a different train of thought, but I was like, wow, like this is so beautiful. Like we really need to change our perspectives. Like we think so small sometimes and think so small of God. And we have such a limiting worldview that really holds us back in life. And what he was essentially saying in the podcast is like, we have to stop believing that we live in a pie economy. And a pie economy is essentially like, oh, there's only eight slices of pie. And if you eat one slice and there's only seven slices left, and if you eat two slices, there's only six slices left, essentially. You have to stop believing that your consumption means that there's less. You have to believe that you live in a garden, which is originally where God put Adam and Eve. 
and where he put them was a garden that was abundant and fruitful. And he was saying that when you eat an apple, there's seeds in the apple and those seeds, say there's eight seeds or three seeds or whatever, how many seeds in an apple. He was saying those seeds from that apple will create trees and those trees create, we don't know how many apples. We essentially don't know like how many apples will come from a tree because it'll literally last a lifetime of you getting apples from this tree. And essentially that's an abundance mindset. That's a mindset that says, when I consume, there is more. When I consume, more is created. And that's that belief that you live in a garden. Anyway, I'm saying all that to say, as we're heading into 2024, I think what's so important is that we don't limit God. We don't allow our limiting beliefs to limit the actions we take or the goals we set as we go into a new year. But we really have to believe bigger about God and believe bigger about what he can do through us. And as we believe bigger about him, then it shows us so, so much that there's abundance and there's abundance to be had for us. So anyway, I wanted to share all of that because I've been thinking about this today. Just hearing that last nugget on the podcast was just like, oh, I have to share this. So yeah. Hey guys, so it's December 31st. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe it's the new year tomorrow. 2023, wow, what a wild ride it was, but good riddance, thank God. It's over. <laughs> Why you had that? I was hungry. If I could. Appreciate that, thank you, mama. If I could get you out of here sooner, I would. We are out with the family today. We're gonna go meet up with um, Elijah's best friend, Sean, and my friend, Destiny. And um, we're just gonna hang out. We have the kids. Shy, shy, safe. And, and Shiloh. <laughs> and Shiloh. And we're gonna go um, just like walk around, hang out, you know, talk. Play um, I don't know about playing games. I'm not sure if there's games here. I don't think there is, but you know, eat and all that stuff. I'm really excited because today Elijah and I are going to do some 2024 vision planning, casting before we go into the new year. We're gonna talk. Well, we never talk about a vision board this year. We, we usually do that every year, but. I'm, I'm not feeling the vision board. Yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. why not anymore. I'm not feeling. Me and Elijah literally, we do a vision board every year. We didn't do it in 2023, and it looks like we're not going to do it for 2024. And I'm, I'm actually fine with that. As long as it's written out. As long like, as it's written out. We, yeah. We look at the, we make the vision board, and then it goes in some closet. And we, we never look at it again. Yeah. yeah. It. So yeah, we're gonna be doing just like talking about our planning for the future like our vision for our family our own personal goals our family goals and like you know just praying into that together and talking about it together and believing for it together and how we're going to execute so i'm really excited about that we're going to do that today i'm assuming when the kids go down yeah definitely yeah when the kids go down because honestly it's chaos mm -hmm. trying to do anything when the kids are awake um but yeah so we're going to do that and yeah, I think today's just gonna be a full day, but it'll be a good day and I'm excited. We just listened to such a good message from Darius Daniels. Oh my goodness, it was so oh my good. God. My God. I felt like it was just such confirmation, such confirmation we needed to hear it. You have the green light to go. A lot of times we're waiting on God, but like this time God is waiting on you. Go, the urgency's with you. Go do it, you have the green light and like upgrade your information, upgrade your execution. It was just so good, just so in alignment with everything I feel like God's been speaking to me, so. 2024 we're not playing we're not playing games we're going hard and yeah so okay. after that yeah uh, <laughs> so what's the schedule on, right? <laughs> <laughs> all day. Who, who you want to see you're so stupid <laughs> So we just got back from hanging with Sean and Destiny. Oh, I need my ponytail. I'll be right back. As I was saying, we just got back from hanging out with Sean and Destiny. It was such a good time. Shiloh had such a good time. He loves being around his godparents. And it was so sweet. We just had like really good conversation. And oh, let me fix this. We just had really good conversation. And it was just a really good time. I'm so, so, so glad that we 
I spent the day with them. Something Elijah and I were talking about on the way home was we were really just talking about like what platforms I was gonna focus on and I was telling him that I was gonna focus on YouTube. Essentially, I have been feeling like Instagram is the shiny platform. I'm not trying to come for it because obviously I've grown an audience on there and I'm so grateful, but I feel like 70,000 subscribers on YouTube versus 70,000 followers on Instagram translates different. When I think about the people that have like made careers out of YouTube, I'm like, these people have longevity, they've been killing it. Those are the Jackie Ienas, like the Emma Chamberlain, like they have just such a rich career, like that's just how I see it. Versus I feel like you can have so many followers on Instagram and I just feel like it doesn't translate the same as it does on YouTube. And I think that's because YouTube has such a high barrier to entry. You have to put so much effort in to see growth, but in the long game, it ends up being so incredibly fruitful for you versus Instagram. I feel like it's a lower barrier to entry. Like you put less energy into it. Mind you, it's still work to grow a platform on any platform, don't get me wrong. but it's still a lower barrier to entry 90 second video 30 second video 60 second video whereas on youtube like you have to put time and effort into your videos because this is long form content and i feel like that makes it a higher barrier to entry and with instagram it's less work than youtube i personally believe that um, because it's not as long form content but i feel like in the end the youtube career is so strong i think something that i'm really battling with is if I put a lot of effort and energy into YouTube, that means that Instagram might not get all my energy. And it's just inevitable that it's not going to fall to the wayside, but it is inevitable that it's probably going to get less of my energy and it's probably not going to grow as quick as I want it to. Man, I think Instagram is a little bit of a status thing and a little bit of an ego thing. Like it's shiny, you know, it's gold plated in a way. Versus YouTube, it's not gold plated, it is gold. You know, that's just kind of how I perceive everything. Don't get me wrong, like I get brand deals on there. People aren't checking for me on any other platform. Brands are checking for me on Instagram. Why? Because that's where my audience is. So I was telling him, I'm like, you know, I do think that it's still wise to steward that platform well, because that's where my brand deals are. And like, I have an audience there that I want to continue to serve. But at the same time, grow this new audience on YouTube. I think that it's just going to take a lot more work from me, but it's also going to be so worth it in the end. Anyway, I don't know. I just have known for years that YouTube is where I'm called. And because I know that that's where I'm called, I'm like, I can't play games with it anymore. Like 2024, the foot is not getting off the gas. Okay. I'm putting pressure, 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 pressure. And I'm really excited about that. Like I'm excited to see what I'm made of in a new way. I've just been changing my language a lot, like going into the new year, which I can't believe is tomorrow. That's insane. But yeah, I have been changing my language. I've been just a lot more aware of the fact that, no, I'm going to do this. Like before it was a lot of, I don't know if I can do it. And even though I'm fully like not 100% confident, I'm like, it's gonna get done. I am doing it. I'm going to do it and I'm just excited to see what I'm made of, you know? I think I've realized that over the last, I don't know, 10 years of my life, questioning myself and doubting myself hasn't really got me as far as I'd like. Uh, and now it's time to do something different and it's time to speak differently and it's time to believe differently. I was telling God in prayer this morning, I was like, my faith has never been greater. My expectation has never been higher. My belief has never been bigger. I truly believe that you're gonna meet me on the other end of this because I feel like I've become a new person and I'm doing the work required to just partner with you, you know, and in a new way and not partner with you from a place of doubt and fear, but I'm partnering with you from a place of faith and yeah, so that was really long-winded, but I just can't believe 2024 is tomorrow. Can you guys believe that? I can't believe that. It's insane. Oh, another thing that I was talking, let me put my hair up. Another thing I've been thinking about so much is authenticity. You know, it's something that we talk about a lot 
you know, we hear it all the time, like be authentic, be you. But I think that it's so much easier said than done, especially on platforms like Instagram, where trends are really encouraged. And I think that when you're participating in a trend, it's not original at the end of the day. You know, you can add your own original spin on it, of course, but I don't know. I just feel like Instagram doesn't encourage original content. I feel like whenever I've posted. Okay, honey. I feel like Instagram doesn't promote authenticity as much as YouTube. When I go on YouTube, I'm actually getting a fresh perspective. I'm hearing new ideas. I'm hearing maybe the same ideas, but presented in a new way. It's just so fresh. I just love it. It's just authenticity to me is just encouraged so much on YouTube. And I love that. And I feel like that's where creators that have something to offer really thrive in my opinion you know because it's like no there's more to you and you really have to have substance to work on youtube like you have to you know you have to be offering people something because it's long form content and people aren't just going to sit there and watch your video for however many minutes if you're not they're not gaining anything from you you know whereas i feel like on instagram it's like a quick scroll 30 seconds you know anyway i'm just excited to challenge myself in new ways i'm excited to like I said, see what I'm made of, but also to challenge myself to read more and to fill myself up more so that I can pour out more. And what I pour out is worth so much more. And you guys get value from me, you know, because I feel like you cannot pour out from an empty cup. I think that places like Instagram, you can, I think you actually can pour out from an empty cup and get by because it's like not long form content. You can copy a trend, you know, you, you don't have to really be yourself because that's not really encouraged as much, I don't feel like. And don't get me wrong, there are creators on there that do it, you know, that show up as themselves and they were able to, you know, figure out a way. Tabitha Brown, you know, comes to mind, like she's been able to be herself on the platform and people come for her, but you don't see that a lot. And I just love the idea of being myself and becoming very comfortable with sharing more pieces of myself with you guys and going deeper with you guys in a new way. That was so long, I feel like. Like, I literally just came in here to do a quick little chat at the end of the day, um, but it ended up being a lot longer, so. Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you blessed us with. Thank you for life on the show. Uh, thank you for helping us make it through 2023. Uh, 2023 wasn't perfect, it wasn't what we expected, but we've definitely grown, we've definitely like, learned, and matured, and uh, we've gotten closer to you, Heavenly Father, and for all the blessings, through the trials that you've given to us, we say thank you, Heavenly Father. As we plan for 2024, we pray that 2024 is, uh, is just Christ-centered, God-centered, we're focused on you more than anything else, okay? So, <laughs> just point out your personal goals. I'd like to hear your personal goals, what you hope to accomplish, kind of solo dello. And then I can share my personal goals. We talk about ways that we can help each other reach our personal goals. And then I would like to hear your family goals. I'll share my family goals, see where the crossover is, see if there's any uh, misalignment. And then we can get on the same page. That's nice, guys. Okay.